Now, this is the second part of refraction under wave. And don't forget, in our last video, we discussed about refractions of light through rectangular prism. So today's topic will be based on refractions of light through triangular prism. This is a triangular prism. So you see how ray of light passes through triangular prism. Let's start from the ray diagram and see how it looks. So when you have your uh, triangular prism like this, so you allow ray of light to incident on one side of the triangular uh, faces. So firstly, you have to draw your uh, normal to the surface. That is the line that will make angle 90 to the surface. So this is the normal to the surface. This is the normal. We have this 90, then 90. Then you allow ray of light to incident at an angle to the normal called angle of incident. Then this is incident ray, while this one is angle of incident, as you know before. That's why you need to go and watch the previous video for you to understand this one very well. Now, instead of this ray of light to go straight like this, then it will refract because it's moving from less than medium to dense medium. It will now move close to the normal. So it will move close to the normal like this. So this is what? Refracted ray. This ray is refracted ray. Why this angle between the normal and refracted ray is called angle of refraction. Then on the other side here, you draw normal as well. Then instead of the ray of light to go straight, no happen, it will move away from the normal. But it's now moving from dense medium to less dense medium. You go like this. So this is emergency ray. Then the angle between this emergency ray and the normal is called angle of emergence, E. So that is how ray of light move in a triangular prism. Then to analyze it, our aim here is to determine the minimum angle of deviation. So the ray, this ray that's supposed to go straight like this, it has deviated. We now want to determine the angle of deviation. Okay? Then, you trace this emergency ray. Can you see? This is trace of incident ray. This is trace of emergency ray. Then the angle between these, the two is called angle of deviation. Now, this the angle of deviation depends on three major things. The first one, it depends on angle of incident. Then, it depends on refracting angle of the prism. What kind of prism are you using? Are you using equilateral triangular prism so that this one will be 60? This is angle of prism. Or you can still use a socially a triangular prism so that this and this will be equal. This one will be different. Now let's assume you are using equilateral triangular prism. Or let's represent our angle, refracting angle of the prism by A. Now therefore, the deviation depends on this angle and the angle of incident and refractive index of the material of the uh, prism. Make it three. So you may be asked, what are the factors on which the minimum angle of deviation of a prism, triangular prism, depends on? It depends on three things. Angle of incident, refractive angle of the prism, and refractive index of the material of the prism. Now, how do they uh, relate together? We have formula that says refractive index N is equal to sine, open bracket, this angle A plus D, angle of division, over 2 divided by sine A over 2. So this is another formula for finding the refractive index of the word, refractive index of the material. Especially for triangular prism, we use this one. Now, to analyze it, as you are increasing the angle of incident, I, angle of division will be reducing. It will not get a state that it will reach its minimum, that it cannot longer reduce again. The next thing is to increase. So in, at that point, we call the angle of division as what? Well, minimum angle of division. That is DM. 
minimum angle of deviation. Then at that point, we now discover that the angle of incident is equal to angle of uh, emergence. Angle of incident I will be equal to angle of emergence. If you now plot the graph of your graph, will look like this. We have this. We have angle of deviation D in degree. You have angle of incident I. So you discover that your graph will look like this. And this one shows that as the angle of incidence eh, increases, the angle of deviation will go reducing. Until it will get a stage at this point when it will reach its maximum, I mean minimum value. It will reach its minimum value. After that, the next thing is what to increase. Then at this point, we now discover that this point, discover that angle of incidence is equal to angle of emergence. And what will now happen again? This line, the refract, refracted ray, will move parallel like this to this. This one become dl. When i is equal to e, this one that become minimum deviation. Then let's relate refractive index here with our previous formula under rectangular prism. That is, refractive index is equal to sine i over sine half. Here we have. Uh, refractive index n is equal to sine open bracket a plus d that is angle of division divided over 2 defined by sine open bracket a over 2 so and this same refractive index is equal to the same uh, is equal to sine i over sine r Therefore, if this equal to this, automatically this one equal to this. So in that case, you can now say uh, this one sine uh, a plus d over two in bracket divided by sine a over two is equal to sine i over sine r. So equate numerator here to this one and this to this. So this shows that. Uh, sine a plus d over 2 is equal to sine r. Sine cancel sine, therefore a plus d is equal to 2i. Or we cannot say d is equal to 2i minus a. So angle of division is equal to 2i minus a. Now let's equate this and this again. So let's call this one equation one. When you put this and this, I'm going to have sine r is equal to sine a over two. Then sine cancel sine, therefore r is equal to a over two. Cross multiply, our a is equal to two r. Then we can have one back here. Then put, substitute for a is equal to two r in this equation one. Therefore, angle of division D is equal to 2i minus 2r because our A is 2r. Therefore, angle of division is equal to a 2 open bracket i minus r. So, this is the uh, formulas under triangular prism. Then, what are the effects of refraction of light? In some cases, if you drop a coin inside a container containing water, and if you now look at it, you see that the coin will look what? As if it comes off a little bit. Then another thing is this. If you are unable to see a coin inside the core, put water inside it. It will raise up. Then you will see it. The reason is this. We have uh, this. Let's we have pop like this. Then we have water inside. Now have an object like this. So the ray of light is never water. The ray of light will come from here on getting to this place, it will refract. Then another ray of light will come like this on getting to this place, it will refract. Then this ray will now look as if it's coming from here. Then you will see the object here. Therefore, this from here to here is apparent depth of this container. Why this one from here to here, from here to here is displacement apparent displacement but the true depth of the container is this
And that's why we have another formula for the refractive index to be what? Refractive index, are, uh, refractive index is equal to redex over apparent dex. So another way is when you have your a straight pencil, eh, put water inside the cup, then dip it towards slightly like this. See that that pencil will look as if it's what? It's bent. The same thing is when you have a, uh, a prism, place it on the coin on the table, then look at the coin through that prism. See that the coin will look as if it's what? It comes up as a result of what? Refraction. Now, don't forget, you are free to call me on my WhatsApp number or you can send WhatsApp uh, message to ask any question pertaining to physics. Now, the next thing is the different formulas that we can use to calculate refractive index. We have many the formula depend on the question. Now, don't forget, we've discussed about this type of formula that refractive index is equal to sine i over sine r. When you are using rectangular prism, then uh, this same formula, under this one, when you have two different media, so you can use velocity in the first medium over velocity in second medium, or speed in first medium over speed in second medium. And don't forget, on that way, our speed is equal to f lambda. So in that case, we are going to have uh, refractive index is equal to f lambda 1 over f lambda 2. But frequency would be equal. When a wave moves from one medium to another, its frequency will stay remain the same. Therefore, this cancel this. So another formula is lambda at its wavelength in first medium over wavelength in the second medium. Then we can still apply refractive index is equal to. 1 over sine c that is under total internal uh, total internal reflection that we did in our previous video. Another one is the one we did today that is refractive index is equal to sine uh, open bracket a plus d uh, over 2 in bracket over, over sine a over 2. So we have uh, almost five formulas here for determining refractive index. Now let's round up with a question under this uh, topic. Uh, we are going to apply all of the formula. The question says a rectangular glass prism of thickness 12 cm is placed on the mark on a piece of paper resting on the horizontal bench. The question, question number one, draw a ray diagram to show the apparent positions of the mark in the glass prism. Very simple. The question is why question you yeah, have 2000. Very simple. You have this one. This is the one. Let's see this the mark. Then you have a prism. The ray of light from here will go like this. On getting to this place, it will do like this. It will refract. Another ray, on getting to this place, it will refract. Then it will now come to this place. Then the mark will be seen here. So it will now look as if this is where the mark is. So this is apparent and depth of the uh, apparent depth of the mark. While this one is the real depth. According to the question, is 12 centimeters. But the distance from here, from here to here, we serve as our what? displacement. So which means if you will know the what the real depth, the real depth is given that 12 centimeters, then Apparent depth is not given, but they gave for the refractive index of the uh, glass. So it means we have to go and calculate the apparent depth because the real depth is formula. Real depth is equal to apparent, apparent depth plus apparent displacement, apparent displacement. So we, we don't, uh, they gave us lead depth. We are looking for uh, apparent displacement. We don't know apparent depth. So we now go and calculate our apparent depth from the formula of uh, refractive index. That says refractive index, and they gave us refractive index is what? 1.5. So 
So it's equal to real death is given 12 over apparent death. We don't know it. So we have to calculate apparent death. You cross multiply, we have uh, apparent death is equal to 12 over 1.5, which will give you 8. 8 centimeters. So in that case, you now go back to the formula that I just wrote now. So read them, 12 is equal to apparent depth, 8, plus apparent displacement. So what is apparent displacement? Bring this one here, that is 12 minus 8 is equal to apparent displacement. Therefore, our apparent displacement is equal to 4 centimeters. So don't forget to share the video and what subscribe. So you are free again to ask as many as possible questions that is not clear to you. Just give me the call or you send message through my WhatsApp number that's showing on the screen. Well done, meet you in the next topic.